So we've talked about, um, you know, three main sorting algorithms at this point. And what I want to do now is just step back for a minute and talk about their performance and in a variety of different axes, axes, axes. Um, so, you know, and, and we'll talk about sort of uh, input dependence and things like that, right? So, so the first thing is, uh, what are best and worst case inputs for these different algorithms? So insertion sort on already sorted data is essentially ON, right? And you can think about why, because when it goes to move the item into the right spot in the right, it's already there, right? Uh, so that works out really well. And so if you're operating on data that is already sorted or where you don't feel like there's a lot of work to do, insertion sort can be a good option. Uh, worst case, sort of backwards, because there I'm dragging things all the way across the array every time. So every inner loop has to go N, or from basically every loop, every inner loop has to take the item from the front of the unsorted part and drag it all the way to the front of the sorted part. Uh, and so that's the longest possible uh, operation of that loop. I never hit that break statement in there, basically. Merge sort doesn't care, right? Merge sort operates the exact same way on every piece of data it's going to, which is kind of awesome, actually. It's the sort of reliable, steady, you know, um, always you always get ON login. Now, there's some problems with merge sort, right, in terms of its uh, use of other resources, which we'll come back to in a minute. But in terms of performance, CPU time, it's 100% predictable. You know what you're getting into. Quick sort, now, now again, I mean, the thing with merge sort is it's ON login on everything, right? So it never does any better. Like in, even insertion sort on already sorted data can do better than, than merge sort, right? Merge sort is always gonna do the same thing. Quick sort, you know, what quick sort, uh, poor implementations of quick sort do pretty uh, well on random data, but this, in this case, it really depends on how the pivot value is chosen. With uh, naive implementations of quick sort that you might write yourself or maybe find in some bad library, uh, sorted data can cause them trouble, particularly if they use the first or the last value as a pivot. That can, that can create issues. All right, so now let's talk about the runtime uh, of, of these different algorithms. So insertion sort, again, best case on sorted data is ON because that inner loop never runs. It breaks out immediately every time. Outer loop goes N steps. Inner loop never runs more than once because everything's already in the right spot. We're good. Worst case, ON squared, right? Um, you know, performance on random data, right? You know, average case is such a complicated term, right? Because it really depends on what you're doing. If most of your data is already sorted, then your average is going to be closer to ON. But usually when we think about average, we think a little bit more uh, conservatively, right? And we say, okay, maybe given random data that you need to sort, it's about an ON squared. Uh, merge sort, across the board, you get ON log N. And you know, this is one of these places where it's fun to think about these trade-offs, right? Like, why are we talking about different sorting algorithms? Because none of them is the best. If there was the best, we would just talk about the best. And then we wouldn't talk about this other stuff. We're not putting these out there just to amuse you. We're actually talking about these algorithms because they are serious sorting algorithms that get used for certain things because they are good at something, right? Already sorted data or near sorted insertion sorts a good option, right? Um, if you need something that's completely predictable, like let's say that you know you, you need to very, very careful, uh, you need to be able to predict exactly how long it's gonna take. You don't care if it takes a little longer in certain cases, but you need to be able to predict it. Merge sort's a good choice. Quick sort, all over the place, right? ON log in, in best case, ON squared. In the worst case, average case, we would say ON log in with reasonable choice of pivot and you know, uh, data that doesn't uh, exploit some of its pathologies. So now let's talk about memory usage. So, you you know, when we talk about runtime, we're usually talking about um, uh, CPU cycles. Um, but, you know, particularly when you start sorting large amounts of data, like Google size data, uh, you do also end up caring about memory because if your sorting algorithm runs out of memory, it's not going to work very well. Um, and it may limit the, uh, the types of data sets that you can use. And so, you know, insertion sort essentially just has this tiny little, insertion sort works inside the array and it's in an imperative algorithm, there's no recursive calls, and it has like one swap variable that it uses. So it's very, very efficient in terms of extra memory, which is something that's kind of nice about it. Merge sort is not the good option here. And you might think, oh, well, merge sort uh, achieves best case performance, you know, in all cases, like why not just use it? It chews up a lot of extra memory. It basically needs an entire scratch array of the same size as the array that you're sorting, which is not great. 
Quicksort, you know, one of the reasons why people will use Quicksort over Sort is that it is more space efficient. Now it's not O1 like insertion sort. And this is one place where, you know, we don't get too deep into the details of how recursion works. But when you make recursive calls, the need to maintain state about every one of those recursive calls starts to add up. And so in insertion sort, you can think of, sorry, with Quicksort, you can think that, you know, if I'm doing the array of size 16, I have one call to Quicksort that makes other calls to Quicksort that makes other calls to Quicksort that makes other calls to Quicksort until I get finally down to the ones that are working on, you know, arrays of size one that start to return. And so at any given point in time, we think about the number of calls to Quicksort that might be, um, active at the same time and that turns out to be log n and every one of them has a little bit of space and so roughly the overall space usage is, is, is o, and o log n, right? And that's due to the recursive calls. Um, and so we, we talk about some of the trade-offs, you know, in, 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 in the text, but, you know, that's one of the things that's so fun about this space, right? Is that, and this is one of the places where you can really show your, um, you know, your chops as a computer scientist, as a thoughtful computer scientist and thinking about different problems and saying, okay, well, what's the right algorithm for this problem, right? Um, you know, because there are more than one algorithm. They do perform better in different situations and being able to pick the right one is, is really important and sort of shows your sophistication.